Hello YouTube, in my workshop this afternoon, I'm um, going to be looking at my friend's Pioneer PL340 turntable, which has got a problem with the tone arm that appears to be in the return position all the time. So I'm going to take her apart this afternoon and um, give it a little bit of a service and let's see how we get on. Right, in the workshop today on the bench is my friend's Pioneer turntable it's a pioneer pl340 so i don't know what age this is all i do know is it's been sitting around and it's not working um and as you can see there's a problem with the tone arm the tone arm is uh, constantly in position the return of the tone arm is constantly working, so it doesn't matter where I put it on the record, it's stuck in the return position. Now, seeing as this uh, LP player hasn't had a service in at least 20 years, pro probably 30 years, we'll look it up later to see whether it's 20 or 30 years, um, I would assume that the grease on the inside of the parts are stuck so we're assuming that the tone arm return is stuck in the on position so what we're going to do take her apart this afternoon clean and re-oil the tone arm selector tone arm hey right, let's have a go okay just lift the lid off somewhere safe from the cat so I'm going to secure the tone arm because I don't want to damage the stylus right Let's secure the tone arm with a tie wrap that should do the job I don't want the stylus jumping up and down and bending the needle so, secure the tone arm rather dodgy record um Oh, me, oh, me. Okay, we're going to put that back in its cover. All of you oldies like me will know. I only hold the record from the edges, not on the on the vinyl itself. Back in the cover. Uh, off with the the mat from the turntable. Okay. Now this is where the band for the belt the belt for the turntable is. It does appear to be a bit loose, but um, just slip that off first and off with the. Right, oh, there it is. It literally just pops off, um, and the belt. The belt is a little bit loose. I did open this before. I've got a bit of tape around it just to make the belt a bit tighter, so I can give you a demonstration of what it's actually doing. Put them to one side. So I always think we're in, we're in for a new belt. Let's face it. After thirty years, twenty years, thirty years, it is definitely time for a new uh, new belt. Tone, tone arm secured, obviously power's off. I'm in Spain so I have got an adapter. And we go in underneath. Phillips head screwdriver, only a small one. It says looking for one. No one just got a flat blade, but flat blade's just a good just as good in this case. And there is one. Get that one out. Magnetized one would be nice. 
it's one. Two. That's mummy cat, that's Mal, that's another workshop cat. Ever a helpful workshop cats. If you've got a cat, you'll realise just how helpful they are. For moving parts, supervising, and generally just getting in the way. But today she's helping me. She's a bit of an old, raggy old cat. Um, stray cat. She is a stray cat. But she's been living with me for the last, the last six years. I think it's seven years this year. But if I go gardening, she's there. If I'm working on my bike, she's there. So literally, six screws to take the back off. So that's nice and easy. This is where it gets a bit more complicated. Um, because I know that the, this one is incredibly hard to open. It just seems to be on there really tight. I have had this apart before. Let's have these out. One. Two. I had it apart before because I just wanted to check that it was the... Um, that the tone on that the grease in there was seizing up. I didn't manage to get this screw off before, which I need to, or this one, to be able to turn over this ball. Um, and it did it did free up the tone arm. I did have it where it wasn't keep turning back on itself. I just managed to free it up a bit, put it back together, and it hadn't freed it up enough. And see, you can take this part of the way out, and before I came underneath and literally freed up this manually but what it needs is a, is a good clean to be honest for it to to stay for long longevity so um i'm gonna try again to remove these screws if i can't remove one of these screws so i can flip the board completely over then i haven't made the decision that i'll cut the cable then it's just in there so hard same with this one i need one of them to come off and neither, neither one of them wants to so my executive decision is I'm going to cut the cable and just join the cable so that I can flip the board over. So it really is to the side cutters. Sorry about this, Nick. It's going to ha have to happen. There you go. Let's cut the wire on your cable. That way we can just flip her over, she says, knowing that she's going to have to cut the other one as well. So two snips. We're just going to put a connector block in, in there too thingy all right now this is where it seized before this mechanism here is the tone arm return and because it's so gummed up it does not return okay and everything else is running smoothly and last time after i did this initially it did work but then i put it back together and it refused to work again. So I can free it up this way just by moving it manually, but it's not working for long enough. Now I don't want to take too much apart. I've got two cables that I do have to put back together, but I've got some connector blocks for them. Uh, so we are gonna go with the ISO. You know someone's moved it, don't you? You know someone's moved it. I've got a bottle of ISO um, cleaner. So I'm going to stop for a second, find that, come back. Okay, so you can have a close-up look. Not an awful lot in there. We've just gone a bit really sticky on here. So I'm going to clean off with some ISO. When the, gre when the grease has gone sticky, that's stopping, stopping the function, so I'm just going to give it a good clean first. A bit more of a clean than that, but it's a bit boring to watch, so uh, I'll just carry on. Clean off properly.
I like to use a little paintbrush, but it's also good to use a Q-tip. Completely clean it off. We're going to re-grease. And stickiness is stopping that tone on, keeping it in the... Um, keeping it in position, or keeping it in the return position all the time. Let's clean off all this muck. It has gone completely greasy and sticky. Oh, cat crying in the background. What's new? Look. We are mucky mucky. Get it cleaned up. It's not gonna it's not gonna take too long. But you know, you could do a good scrub after 20, 30 years. So I'm just going to turn you off for the minute, and continue to clean her up, and then uh, come back to you in a sec. I was going to. <laughs> Does seem a bit overkill. <laughs> Does seem a bit overkill. These are car connectors, but there you go. Let's crimp that one. It's not going anywhere. Might be easier with the pliers, to be honest. I said it was a bit, uh, bit overkill, but there you go. It'd be easier to crimp it with the pliers. Nope. Not easier to crimp it with the pliers. Is that with the electrical tooling? A bit of tug test. Okay, so that's that one. So putting it back on, run the right way. Make sure you don't have any of the power cables um, anywhere near. You can put the screws in them. Put the screws back on. Now, if you want to test it first before putting the hole back on, you can just put a couple of screws in and test it. I'm pretty confident that's going to fix the problem. And if it hasn't, I'm going to shake the screws out again. Let's find a magnetised one. That would be so much easier. Make sure you're not going to go through any power cables with the screws because that would be a bit of a disaster. Right. Put these back in. Nice, easy little job. Flip 
back over. Okay, so next we have to put the, the belt back on. While we're here, we're just going to give it a bit of a, a bit of a dust with a brush. I purposely taped this to make the belt a bit tighter because it's a bit loose. This is not the way to do it. All right. Easiest way to do it is put the belt round the, the deck, shall we say. Hold, hold the belt so it's tight so it doesn't just fall off of the... You want, to see, you want it seated flat as well. Hold it so it doesn't fall off of the plate. Put the belt round. You can see that's still really, really floppy in there, but it is what it is at the moment. I think we're going to need a new belt. That back down. We are going to remove the cable tie. I'm going to go and put it back on the amplifier, then turn the video back on and let you see her powered up and let's see if she's working. Just going to move her, put her back on the amplifier. Does she? Right, she's plugged back in, got it back together, the tone arm is uh, released. I'm going to get a record on there. Again, I seem to have had problems with my tripod. I actually think it's problems with the camera base. But a little handheld demonstration of this rather bizarre record. <laughs> okay, as you can see, I'm going to keep this on here so you can see that drive belt is so slack, but we're having, we're having problems. So I'm going to tighten up the drive belt just with a bit of tape, and then, yeah, you can see there's problems there with that drive, that drive belt. So I'm going to take it off. The belt's far too slack, I'm just going to have to temporarily tighten it up. I have tightened up the drive belt again, the third time I've tightened up the drive belt. As you can see, she's running lumpy because that belt has well and truly had it. She does spin, but the belt has had it. Fortunately, I haven't got another belt. Right, let's go. Let's get some power to it. Let's get this on. Let's get the record on. Let's see if we still have a problem with the... Turn the amp down a bit. So this could come out a really weird sound. Obviously I'm not going to play with the sound because it's going to be different levels. She appears to be fixed because the tone arm is working. New, new belt needed. The record player is working again. Uh, so my friend can have that back. Pleased to be able to do it for him. Uh, really dubious about the uh, choice of music, though. <laughs> okay, so that's that's another one wrapped up on uh, Debbie's workbench. And we have a couple of other projects that um, I will be going into audio-wise. Um, I think I'll show you the next one, which is my Valve Radio, which is going to be a whole new experience. Let's have a quick look what's next on the bench. This little beauty. So hopefully see you next time. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe uh, if you want to follow my channel. That would be really helpful to me. <laughs>